Was Nikola Tesla behind what was determined to be one of the largest meteorital explosions in modern history? On July 11th, 1934, the inventor would describe what was a new defense weapon to the New York Sun and the New York Times. Tesla would explain that not only could it be used to defend against enemy aircraft, it could also be used to stop ground infantry as well. He'd call his invention Teleforce. It was a particle beam projector that he intended to be used as an instrument for national security. The press referred to it as a death ray or death beam. With this machine, Tesla would declare that a nation could bring destruction upon any known enemy. He'd describe it as an invention powerful enough to destroy 10,000 planes 250 miles away. Tesla's goal was to accelerate mercury isotopes to 43 times the speed of sound. This would take place in a pressurized vacuum using electrostatic propulsion. Then it would be shot in a beam towards a target. He proclaimed, my apparatus projects particles which may be relatively large or of microscopic dimensions, enabling us to convey to a small area at a great distance trillions of times more energy than is possible with rays of any kind. Many thousands of horsepower can thus be transmitted by a stream thinner than a hair. The nozzle would send concentrated beams of particles through free air. When put in operation, Tesla said that the latest invention of his would make war impossible. This death beam, he asserted, would surround each country like an invisible Chinese wall, only a million times more impenetrable. It would make every nation impregnable against attacks by airplanes or by large invading armies. The papers described it as a machine to end all war. Almost a year after his announcement, Tesla could find no funding. So Tesla wrote the following letter to Jack Morgan, J.P. Morgan's son. I have made recent discoveries of inestimable value. The flying machine, meaning airplanes, has completely demoralized the world. So much that in some cities, as London and Paris, people are in mortal fear from aerial bombing. The new means I have perfected afford absolute protection against this and other forms of attack. These new discoveries, which I have carried out experimentally on a limited scale, have created a profound impression. One of the most pressing problems seems to be the protection of London, and I am writing to some influential friends in England hoping that my plan will be adopted without delay. The Russians are also very anxious to render their borders safe against Japanese invasion, and I have made them a proposal which is being seriously considered. But regardless of this letter, Jack Morgan still decided not to fund him. As a result, Tesla presented his invention to the League of Nations. Unfortunately, the U.S. government would go to extremes to stop Tesla from getting any backing, as they wanted to be the only nation to have such a powerful weapon. So over the next few years, Tesla's labs were continuously raided, but they never got their hands on the blueprints for the death ray. This led many to believe that it was just an idea manifested in Tesla's head, that it never came to fruition. But all speculation would be put to rest on his 78th birthday when he announced his invention when a reporter at the gathering would ask him exactly how far along his experiment was. To which Tesla would reply, but it is not an experiment. I have built, demonstrated, and used it. Only a little time will pass before I can give it to the world. But his critics would say, how is this possible? How could he possibly test such a powerful weapon without the world knowing? This brings us to the media. What many don't know is Tesla actually started working on the Teleforce in the late 1800s and he would execute his first test run on June 30th, 1908, but it was nowhere near New York. It actually took place thousands of miles away in Siberian, Russia, in a remote forest near Port Kamenaya, Tunguska River. This is where an unexplained force caused a massive explosion. The said explosion flattened over 500,000 acres or 2,000 square kilometers of forest. Russian scientists concluded that the explosion was the equivalent of 10 to 20 megatons of TNT, around 1,000 times more powerful than the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. Witnesses reported seeing a blue beam, almost as bright as the sun, passing through the sky. They had explained a bright flash and a loud explosion followed it. After a lengthy study, Russian scientists concluded that it was an asteroid impact. But how could an asteroid impact take place where there was virtually no crater? Due to this fact, they would decide it must have exploded above ground. What they didn't know, that there was another side to this story. Many scholars believe that Tesla built his death ray in Wardenclyffe on Long Island. And he would test this death ray in 1908. 
According to his calculations, he was supposed to hit somewhere in the Arctic, but he missed his destination, overshooting it by thousands of miles. Instead, his beam would make contact in the Siberian forest near the Tunguska River. After hearing about this event, Tesla was thankful that nobody was hurt, but he determined the weapon was too dangerous, so he dismantled it, eventually coming back to it. And still a hundred years later, no trees.